In this tutorial, we're going to learn to make the shawl that I'm wearing right now. It's called Miss Grace, and it's by Skano. And before we go any further, let's take a look at a couple of photos to see the whole shawl. I have a photo of the shawl on my mannequin. You can see it is stunning. And a photo of it spread out in my dining room table so you can see the whole thing. This is a free pattern put out by Skano, and Skano sells kits to make this. And the yarn in your kit is fingering weight, 100% superwash merino. It is gorgeous yarn to work with. It's all hand painted, and your kit comes with everything you need. You get two hanks of the base color yarn and one hank each of the two other colors, color one and color two, and they are labeled. And uh, there are, I looked this morning, there are 19 different colorways available. I encourage you to go take a look. And you can go there and order your kit and uh, download and print out the free pattern and follow along and um, you can be ready when your mail arrives at the door. I want to talk a little bit about Skano as a company. This is the third tutorial that I've done with them, and they are innovative and young and fresh and a great company. I love working with them. And I'll give you links to the other two tutorials in the video description field below. Um, they uh, are an international company doing great things in the world. The yarn is spun in Italy and dyed in Germany, and they have a new facility in Florida where they're shipping, uh, they're shipping worldwide from this facility in Florida. And they're an inclusion company, which means they are set up to employ uh, people with special needs in both the German facility and the American facility. And last I heard, the German facility was 50%, um, was employing 50% of the people there were, had special needs. And I know they're working on that with, in the Florida, and they're working on getting those numbers up. And I just read a blog post yesterday where they're actually working on shipping more products to find more works, work for these people and possibly expand. I, I love working with them, and if you can imagine what they're doing, they are super nice people, and I love the company making beautiful yarns. Um, okay, back to this project. Um, Skano has this listed as an intermediate project, and that's, that's about right. The knitting part of it actually really isn't that difficult. It is a garter stitch shawl. It is not that difficult. But the pattern reading is maybe the trickiest part. And uh, I'm going to walk through all of that with you, of course. We're going to <laughs> look at all of that and, and uh, all the different steps. And the pattern luckily kind of eases you into this. So if you're, unsure, if you're an advanced beginner and you're unsure if this is right for you, I encourage you to download the pattern and follow along. And um, you can see if you think this is going to work for you and get your yarn ordered and everything else. Um, and one thing about this pattern, and I don't know if the designer, his name is Bjorn, he's awesome. I don't know if he did this on purpose, but the pattern kind of eases you in to the trickier parts. It starts out really easy with just one color and then a stripe and then it just keeps uh, adding more until you're really comfortable with it when it shows up. I, I can't even describe how awesome it is. Anyway, I'm going to give you a link here on screen to my website and on my website you'll see links to everything I mentioned, the free pattern, the color, the Skano website with the colorways and everything else. There's also the links in the video description field below and um, next up we're going to get started knitting the shawl. We're about ready to get started, and I am still wearing the shawl. I was actually challenged by someone on Facebook to wear the shawl through the whole tutorial because it's still really warm here in Texas. <laughs> and we have the AC off so that it doesn't make a noise on, um, so the camera doesn't pick up the buzz of the air conditioning. But I'm still wearing it. I'm going to try. Anyway, if you've worked with charts before, you're going to find that this is a really different looking chart. Um, when in knitting charts or cross stitch, stitch charts or anything, it's normally mapped out on a grid and each square equals one stitch. And this chart is quite different. I think you're going to find it's a work of art. I love this chart. Bjorn did a great job on it. Um, so if you are familiar with working with charts, it's actually going to make working this pattern easier. And if you're unfamiliar, I'm going to show you how to work through this chart, which is pretty unique in itself. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here is the chart, and if you're familiar with charts, you can see it looks very different. Um, we have this little section down here, which is uh, chart A, and this longer section, which is the meat of the shawl, which is chart B. And down here at the very bottom, you'll see that you have um, your legend, base color, color one, and color two. I encourage you to write down 
um, a little description of your three colors so that you don't lose track of it. Uh, like with the colors that I have, um, well, let me pick these up. I have these colors here in this kit. Uh, like this is the base color, and that one's easy to tell because it's, uh, I have the most of it. But this one here is color one, and I would probably call it light. And then color two, I would probably just write like dark, just so I can keep track of it. It seems like a simple thing, but I spent um, pretty much every row, I double checked what my colors were each time. Just a little pointer. Anyway, so here we are with the chart, and we get started here with chart A. And it doesn't really exist in the chart, it actually exists over here. And chart A is written out what looks like row for row. But what we're going to be working with here in this pattern is not really rows, but ridges, garter stitch ridges. And if we take a look at garter stitch, it takes two rows, one down and one back, to make one ridge like this. So this rust colored line is two rows, down and back, you know, a right side row and a wrong side row. Same thing with this white one a right side row and a wrong side row. So we're not really thinking about rows anymore, we're really thinking about garter stitch ridges, which is two rows. I encourage you to use a, um, a row counter. I've got my row counter here to keep track of where you are through this. We're gonna start out with just, uh, well, let me, let me go through this first. You can see we have um, one and two is in base color. And because these are garter stitch ridges, one is a row down and a row back, Row two is a row down and a row, uh, ridge two is a row down and a row back. So ridges one and two is actually four rows. And you'll get the hang of it, you'll start thinking like that. And because this is a, uh, a right triangle shawl, we're going to increase one stitch at the end of every right side row. So right smack dab in the middle of every garter stitch ridge, we'll knit across, increase, and then knit the wrong side row. Okay, let's go ahead and move the chart out of the way a little bit. I guess I can leave it kind of on camera here. Um, I'm going to start with my base color and of course I'm using bigger needles and thicker yarn than the kit in the pattern just so that you can easily see what I'm doing. These are not the gorgeous colors that the um, uh, the colorways that the kits come in. This, these are just some leftover worsted weight yarns that I have. So we're going to start by casting on two stitches and we're starting at the very bottom point of chart A, right here. I kind of want to leave the instructions in. So we are on a right side row here. It's our first right side row. We're going to knit across and increase at the last stitch. I'm going to KFB, which means to knit the stitch normally, but leave the loop on the left needle swing the tip of your needle around to the back loop of that stitch and knit it. And so we've increased by one stitch. And then we just knit back. All three stitches. Okay, and if you're keeping track with your row counter, that was ridge number one. Ridge number two is also in base color. So I'm going to knit across to the last stitch and KFB, knit front back, a one stitch increase. Turn the work and knit back to finish the ridge. And I'm using DPNs now. I'll tell you that I actually did start my shawl on DPNs. I always like to use the shortest needles possible. And I switched to circulars as soon as it got too long. You can see we're already starting a little triangle shape. That was ridge number two. And the pattern tells us ridge number three, excuse me, is in color two. And in what I'm doing here, that is rust. So to attach my new color of yarn, I'm gonna put my needle into the next stitch normally, grab my new color of yarn, leaving you know, about a six inch tail Wrap the needle and pull that through, and the new yarn is attached. I'm going to just tighten things up. And we're on ridge three, so we'll knit all the way across. And increase at the end of the row. And I turn the work, I'm going to knit back, but I'm going to tie a little knot 
If you've watched my videos, I am a fan of little knots. To keep things from getting loosey-goosey and unraveling, this knot will never show. Okay, I'm on the second half of ridge number three. And then we take a look at our listing here and ridges four through six are base color. And now that we have a couple of colors going, we're gonna carry, I can show you, because we're, we're going to carry all three colors up the straight edge throughout the shawl. And so I wanna give, I didn't think about this when I did this, okay. I wanna give a little twist to the two yarns together so that the white yarn catches the rust color yarn. You see what I have there? I have the, the white yarn um, catching the rust color yarn to help carry it up the side. And it's gonna change a little bit when we involve the third color, but this is good for now. So I'm on, whoops, I didn't click my thing. I'm on ridge number four. Increase at the end of this row. This whole shawl, when you reach the end of a right side row, you increase by one stitch every single time. Okay. Okay, ridge number four. Now I wanna catch the rust colored yarn in um, my white yarn again, because I'm gonna do another base color row. So I all, this, let me just explain this slowly, because this is how I do it every time, so that it looks consistent. And in this pattern, it doesn't actually make a huge difference if, you're, if your wraps are always the same, if your catches or twists or whatever, <coughs> excuse me, are always the same, because we're gonna knit a border around the whole thing, and so the edges are actually going to be covered up. But in just future knitting, future projects, if you always do this the same way in every project, it will always look consistent all the way up the side of your work. So this is what I do. Here's the color I wanna use. I move it um, behind the other colors and then bring it under the other colors like that. So I, I wrapped the color I'm using under and you can see the twist that I got on the yarn there. And every time I finish a ridge, I'm going to want to catch the yarns that way. Every time I find myself ready to work a right side row. At the end of a row, I'm going to increase, turn the work, and knit back. Okay, you remember I said that this pattern eases you into the techniques used? This is how it goes. This is exactly what we keep doing, is switching between color two and the base color up until row or ridge 19. So I'm gonna set this aside and jump into ridge number 19 here um, because we're ready to incorporate the third color. And it's really basically the same as what we've been doing, but you want to pay special attention when you're wrapping the um, wrapping or catching the yarns on the side of the work, carrying them up this side. So I'm on um, ridge 19, which is color one. I'm going to attach my new color the same way that I did the last time. Fold my new color over and wrap the back needle and pull it through. And knit across. The shell grows really quickly, just increasing once every ridge. You, um, the shell gets wide pretty quickly. And my increase. Turn the work.
Okay. And the reason I made you sit through that whole row is so that we can talk about, or we can take a look at what this looks like when you are carrying two colors of yarn. Now, I'm going to tie my tidy little knot here with my new color and the closest yarn to it. I finished ridge number 19, and ridge number 20 is back to base color. So I take my two, I take my, the attached colors that I'm not using, and this is the color that I want to go back to. And so I kind of put it over and behind, and then pull it under, and I end up getting the same wrap. I actually have the tail stuck in there, it doesn't make any difference. But I have the same wrap that I had with one yarn, but it's catching two yarns this time. And then I'm going to just start the row normally. And usually what I like to do is get myself a few stitches in and stop and then straighten these out because sometimes they, your tension doesn't make a huge difference because you're going to cover up this edge, but you don't want big loops sticking out and you also don't want it super scrunched together. So usually I'll give them a tug and then give the work a little tug um, like this to make sure that the tension is nice. It becomes second nature when you've been working on this shawl for a while. I can't believe I did that whole thing without my glasses. <laughs> I'm getting my glasses for the next segment. Anyway, you're gonna finish up chart A. There are 38 ridges, and when you're finished, you will have 40 stitches if you've done all your increases properly. And next up, we're going to get started on chart B, which is really the meat of the shawl. With chart A finished, we're ready to get into the meat of the shawl and take a look at chart B. And like I said, this is really just knitting. We have some short rows in there, but it's really just knitting. And the whole, the, the trickiest part of this whole pattern is just understanding the pattern and how to read the pattern. And that's what we're going to cover right now. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here is the gorgeous, gorgeous chart that we're working from. And if you take a look at this chart, we have three different shapes. We have uh, a triangle over here on this side. We have a triangle over here on this side and a leaf shape. Here's another leaf shape and a triangle and a leaf shape and a triangle. And besides the triangles and the leaf shapes, it's just stripes between. <coughs> and that's what we're working with here in the pattern. These triangles are called half forms and this is, um, the first one we'll be working is a half form. We have another half form here. And then these leaf shapes are called full forms. And those are the shapes we're, we see. We have full, um, half forms, full forms, and stripes. And you can see that we have uh, the gray, the green, and the red all going on, which are represented here in the legend. And hopefully you've made little notes about your exact colorway. Okay, so We've been thinking about ridges this whole time, right? Um, garter stitch ridges and not just rows. And all of the forms are worked on the second half of the ridge, meaning the wrong side of the work. We're looking at the right side of the work here on the chart. So when we talk about working this ridge or, or this um, form, we are starting here at the beginning of the row and knitting across and then knitting back and we do this at the end of the wrong side of the work. This is called a full, let me get the words just right, a half form at the end of a wrong side row. And this is the half form at the beginning of a wrong side row. And the reason I'm making a point about saying that is because if you're thinking about rows, um, this looks like it's at the beginning of the row, and this looks like it's at the end of the row, but we're talking about ridges, and this is at the end of the ridge. Um, yeah, this is at the end of the ridge here, and this is on the right side of the ridge. So this is at the, anyway, we'll break those down as we come to them, because I'm actually gonna work through these with you. So we finished chart A, and the next thing that we have to do um, is this half form with the B, um, in a blue circle. And the B in the blue circle, let me slide my pattern over a little bit to show you where to find things. All of the definitions of the numbers that you see in circles are all right here in the pattern, and that's what I'm referring to here. So the B in the circle means a blue circle with a letter B indicates so you have to knit a half form at the end of the garter stitch row. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do right now. 
I'm going to close my pattern because the instructions for knitting the half form are here on the back and we're working a half form at the end of the wrong side row. Okay, we're going to take this slowly. I've switched to circular needles. I'm going to slide this out of the way for a moment. And my, um, let me get back here so I can double check my color. We're working in red, which is color two, and for me that is rust. So I'm going to take the two colors that I'm not using and separate them from the color that I am, am using so that I can catch this, um, the carried yarns. And there we go. I have a nice catch there. And I'm going to work you all the way through the beginning of this. So you have to watch me knit some stitches. And I work a few stitches in and straightened out, straighten out my carried yarns. You don't have to do that every time. I just like for it to look tidy all the time. Okay, because we're working, we're about at the end of a right side row, I'm going to be sure to increase at the end of this row before I turn the work. Do my KFB and turn the work. Let's take a look at the pattern because we're almost when we need to start. Um, uh, thinking about this this uh, half form, really what I'm going to do here is knit all the way to the end and then start um, the, uh, with row one of this half, half form. So you always want to look because it's different for half forms on the other side. Yarn on the floor. Okay. I told you this shawl gets wide quickly. And I wanted to be sure to have <laughs> chart A really, truly uh, finished so I can show you what it really looks like. So I have a lot of stitches on the needle is my point. Okay, I'm back to the straight edge here. And row one, in the half form, I have to get my yarn off the floor, excuse me. I have to get off the floor because I have to be sure to do my, my little wrap before I go any further. Okay, row one of a half form at the end of a wrong side row is knit 24 stitches. And this is going to make the triangle shape that we saw. Looks like I split a stitch. And I lost count, excuse me. 
I didn't lose count. Okay, after we work the 24 stitches, we're ready to do the wrap and turn. And the wrap and turn is a little bit different in this pattern, but I really like the way it looks. This is what the wrap and turn looks like after knitting 24 stitches. You put your needle in as if to knit and slip it over to the right needle. Turn the work, move the working yarn to the back, and slip that stitch as if to knit again. It kind of puts a double twist on it. And then row two, and following our instructions here, you'll see that rows 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, up to 24, um, all of the even numbered rows are knit to the end. So I will do that. And we are at our straight edge again. And that was row two. And then rows three, five, seven, nine, all of the odd numbered rows except for row one are, um, are knit across. And the, numbers, uh, the number that you knit is decreased by two. It's two fewer each row. And so I want to show you um, knitting 22 across is my next row because I want to show you the wrap and turn again. So I'm going to wrap my yarns, my carried yarns, as always. And you notice on this form, um, we're not reaching the angled side in this half form, so we're not doing the one stitch increase. You only do the one stitch increase when you actually reach that edge. Let me get some more yarn here. One more. So that's 22 and I'm ready to do the wrap and turn again. So I put the needle in. This is all spelled out very clearly in the pattern. I just want to make sure you see it. Put the needle in as if to knit. Slip that stitch from the left to the right needle, turn the work, pull the yarn back between the two needles, and that same stitch, you put your needle in as if to knit and slip it over, and you end up with a wrap around that stitch. So that's what you're going to do on this half form is just follow the row by row instructions, and you're going to um, knit on your right side rows, you'll knit across two fewer each time until you end up with just two stitches over, two stitches back, and you have finished that, that half form. And let's see what happens after that. Okay, we've finished this form, and then if you follow, I, I encourage you to get something pointy to follow um, the chart with. Knitting needle works very well. Right above that half form in red is this gray stripe that goes all the way across. And the gray is our base color, and this is just exactly what I said, a gray stripe. We're going to increase at this end and knit back. And something that um, is very unique to this chart that I've never seen in a chart before, but I think it really makes the chart cool looking, is you see that this gray stripe is thicker than this gray stripe. And it makes no difference. This is one ridge, and this is one ridge. And now that we're in chart B, something you can count on is every other ridge is a base color ridge. So no matter how skinny it looks, it's still a base color ridge. So let me show you. So base color ridge, color one ridge, base color ridge, color two ridge, base color ridge, color one ridge. And we're back in base color, but if we follow it across, we'll see that we have a half form over on this side. So that's the next thing we're going to work. We're going to we're going to pretend that I finished this um, half form and worked all these ridges. Now we're going to work the half form over at the beginning of the wrong side row. So let me get my work into a position where I can do this. 
I'm going to undo that wrap and turn. And this is the, the part of the ridge that is the trip over to the angled side. And because I'm reaching the angled side, I'm going to do my one stitch increase and turn the work. And then let's take a look at the pattern again. Okay, at, on, at this little form here, we have the number two. That's something I wanna make clear. Um, this B applies to this triangle. This two applies to this triangle. This 10 applies to this full form. It all becomes pretty clear it's never confusing. The, um, the number is at the lower left corner of the form. And this two in a circle, uh, the number two in a white circle indicates that you have to start a half form uh, right after the first stitch, right at the beginning of the row. And that's what we're ready to go, the beginning of the wrong side row. And the instructions for that are right up here on this pattern. So row one is knit 21 stitches. And this is really actually um, very much the same as what we just did, but we're not carrying the yarns up this side and we have to remember to increase. So uh, starting with 21 stitches. I think that was 21. And now I'm going to do my wrap and turn, slip as if to knit, turn the work, pull the yarn back between the two needles, slip that stitch as if to knit again. And the instructions for row two are knit to the end and increase by one stitch. And this is the half form at the beginning of a wrong side row. Okay. And then let's take a look at what the pattern tells us from there. Because just like the instructions we had here, um, all of the even numbered rows are lined up here and it's knit to the end and increased by one stitch. And then all of the odd numbered rows except for row one are uh, knit a number, and in this case, it's one stitch fewer each time. And it was two stitches fewer down here. The reason it's one stitch fewer is because we're increasing in this one. It ends up being the exact same, sh same shape. So the difference between these two is really, you wanna follow the instructions, but we're increasing in this one at the end of every right side row, and on this one, we have to remember to carry, um, to catch the yarns on the side of the work, to carry the yarns up the side of the work. Okay, one more thing I wanna show you in the pattern, in the chart, is uh, the way that this eases you into the different things that you have to do. So we start with just stripes, and we do a half form, and some stripes, and a half form, and then we get to the full form, and we see this number here is, is a 10, and in the pattern tells us, the number in the white circle is the number to start a full form, okay? So you're gonna knit 10 stitches in, and then start the instructions for the full form, which we're going to take a look at here. Uh, I'll tell you, um, I read the instructions a little bit differently when I did my shawl. I knit 10 and started on the 11th stitch, but the pattern actually tells us to start on the 10th stitch. Ultimately, it made no difference in my shawl. So let's go ahead and take a look. 
um, knitting a full form. Each form starts with 20 stitches towards the straight edge of the shawl um, on the back row of the work and has 12 garter stitch ridges. So the setup row is you, um, on the wrong side of the work, is knit 20 stitches. So the first thing I'm going to do, I had a number 10 in the circle. So I'm going to knit, whoops, I'm going to knit the 10 stitches. Or to be more accurate, I should knit 9. And then knit the 20 stitches for the setup row. And then I do my wrap and turn. So that was my setup row. And then row one is knit 20 stitches. We can go back to the pattern here. Row one is uh, knit 20 stitches and then do the wrap. Row two is knit 22 stitches. And you repeat these two rows for uh, 12 times total. You will have 13 ridges in this color, and that seems counterintuitive, but you had the right side row of your ridge, and then you had the setup row, which actually created one ridge. And then if you work these two rows 12 times, you'll end up with 13 ridges. You can use a row counter, though, if you're not sure about it. Um, and then you repeat these two, you end up with this beautiful leaf shape, and then you, um, you finish the ridge off by knitting back to the end of the wrong side row, back to the straight edge. So back to the pattern here. Those are all the shapes you're going to knit, and those are what all the numbers mean. And you're going, this shawl is getting really warm, I have to say. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to wear it in the next segment. It's getting warm in here. I really tried. I really tried. So we talked about what the B means in the blue circle, and we talked about what the numbers mean in the white circle. The only one we didn't cover is the number in the yellow circle. And the number in the yellow circle is actually the same. It's the number, at the, the stitch number to start a full form. But instead of counting from this side, you're counting from this side. Just It ends up being a quicker count to count this way because you're ending up with a lot of stitches on the needle. Okay, we had to stop the camera for a second. I tried to last wearing that shawl. I did <laughs> as long as I could. But there, um, I had to stop and readjust my microphone, take the, uh, take the shawl off. Okay, back to this chart. I encourage you to take your, your knitting needle and follow each ridge all the way across to the end and all the way back. Because there'll be times, like um, in this one here, that comes up pretty quickly after you work a couple more forms. You see you have a half form over here. You follow it along, and look, you have another half form. You have two half forms in this same ridge. And then um, it gets even, it gets even um, more, not complicated, but it gets uh, more challenging. I don't even know if it's challenging. But you just want to be sure to follow this across because like on this row you have a full form and a full form. And as the shawl gets wider, you know, you have more things happening. Oh, this one's a good one. You have a full form and a full form here. And this number two means you start this full form right at the beginning of the wrong side row. And then you follow this down. And this number 44 in the yellow circle means that you start this full form counting 44 stitches from the straight edge. And then after you finish the form, you have some, some striping that helps even out this edge. When, when I was finished with mine, it, it was really straight after that striping. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. So when you finish everything, you don't want to bind off because we have one more row before we start the border, and that's what we're going to get started with here. But the pattern explains this, and I encourage it. Uh, what I did with mine was I set it out flat. I actually use my dining room table and a couple of blocking boards, but you can do it on a bed. It's no problem. And then I just used a little steam to make sure everything was perfect and square and straight. The shawl wanted to be 
uh, the right triangle shape without much coaxing, so it wasn't a problem. But then after you do that, and the shawl has a chance to cool off or dry or whatever, we're ready to get started on the border, which we'll cover next. Once you have the whole chart finished, we're ready to get started on the border. And if you end up uh, with the same yarn amounts that I did, I uh, had a little bit of color one and color two left when I finished the chart, and I had a lot of my second hank of the, of the base color. And that's good because it takes a lot of yarn to knit the border. And really, it doesn't matter if you have less yarn than you might think because it doesn't make a huge difference whether the border is really wide or really narrow. And the nice thing is you can pretty much just keep knitting border until you run out of yarn. Um, I will tell you this because I don't want to forget to say it later in the video. If you want to make sure that you have enough yarn to knit all the way around the shawl while we're knitting the border, and it'll make sense, make more sense here in a minute, but I just don't want to forget this number. It took me five grams of yarn to make it all the way around. So if you take your kitchen scale, or what I call my, my yarn scale at my house, and uh, measure your yarn, and if you have over five grams, uh, from my experience and um, how I measured it, I needed at least five grams to go all the way around. I mean. Yes, five grams. There was a little bit more than I needed in five grams. Just so that you know before you start a row that you have enough yarn. Okay, um, oh, the other thing is that you're going to need long needles for this. And uh, Skano has 60 inch circular needles for sale on their website. If you go to the blog post, um, not the blog post, the, uh, the page with all the colorways, and I'll give you a link, of course, um, in the video description field below and on my website. There's a link that says accessories um, just above the colorway pictures, and that will take you to a page where they have 32 and 60 inch needles. 32 inch circular needles are appropriate for knitting the whole shawl, and then 60 inch is nice and long for picking up uh, the border stitches and knitting them. Just want to let you know where you can get those. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what it looks like to add the border. So we have this right triangle, of course. We've been talking about it the whole time. And actually, the border has worked in the chart here. You see we have um, this uh, base color going all the way around. I am actually going to put the chart away and work from this little piece. We're going to pretend that this is a finished shell, but I'm just working from a tiny piece so that we can fit it all on camera. You are going to, this, this is the way I thought about it. The pattern describes things a little bit differently than I'm going to explain it here, but I think it worked in my head this way. You're certainly welcome to follow the way the pattern explains it. I counted this 90 degree angle as the beginning of my round, and the two 45 degree angles were the rest of the round. So the 90 degree angle here, kind of the beginning of the row for um, the whole chart that we've been working, you're going to want to use, I think it's color one, and knit across. And then when you get here, you're ready to start picking up stitches along this edge. Now the pattern has you, when it's all set out flat and, it's, and um, you've squared out the corners and everything, the pattern tells you to take a tape measure, and I'm using this little ruler because my piece is so small, and to measure out every 10 inches. And you can use clipping markers like this, or you can use safety pins. I'm just measuring out two inches, for example. So measure out every 10 inches, and um, the pattern tells you to pick up and knit 55 stitches in, in that 10, 10 inches. For me, that was like a little much for me to eyeball. So I put in, I put in a clipping marker at 5 inches so that I could pick up 27, inches in, 27 stitches in here, and then I broke it off into 2 and a half inches because picking up 13 stitches is about a number that I can eyeball pretty easily. So, <laughs> excuse me. So really for the first, I would say 20 inches of picking up stitches, I broke it down into two and a half inch segments and just picked up 13 each time. And the math doesn't work out perfectly and so I just made adjustments um, at the end of those 10 inches. But then after you've been picking up stitches for a while, you kind of get in a groove for um, uh, how much space to leave between each stitch for it to work. And you won't really need uh, as many clippy markers. You just want to mark off I continued to mark off every five inches uh, for the whole rest of the picked up stitches. And to pick up the stitches, I just put some yarn away. Let me grab this. I wasn't thinking about actually demonstrating picking up stitches. 
But while you're doing this, you're going to be working first from this edge that has the increases on it. So it isn't this beautiful, like, bind-off looking edge. Things are kind of um, not as even. You just want to be sure to pick up two legs as you work across. To pick up the stitches, of course, we're going to start way up here. You want to put your needle under two legs. Take your yarn. Um, your, your yarn is actually already attached. It's like knitting with one needle. You pull it through, you've picked up one stitch. Then go under two legs and pull it through. You've picked up two. And you work this all the way across and keeping in mind and eyeballing. I'm splitting that stitch. Keeping in mind eyeballing your count. But like I said, you'll get into a groove and it'll be faster. I mean, it'll be easier to, to know exactly how many to pick up or how often you need to pick them up. So you'll pick up along this edge and then you turn a corner and you'll pick up along this edge that has the yarns that we carried up the side. No different, still just pick up two legs and you'll also be picking up the carrier yarn. And if you're ever unsure about picking up the stitches and if you're if you're doing it correctly, just take a look, just stop for a minute, put your work down and take a look and does the edge look smooth? You know, does it look nice or are you picking up further into the work sometimes and further or closer to the edge at other times? And if you're unhappy with it, just pop a few stitches back and try those again. Um, on the whole, you know, the stitches we're picking up are so small and the shawl is actually so big that any tiny imperfection isn't going to make a bit of difference. So you can keep knitting with color one after you pick up the stitches. You can keep knitting with color one as long as you like or until you are out of yarn. I had enough to do just one round, pick up the stitches, and then I was done. And then I switched to base color for the rest of my border. And uh, to make the border flat there are uh, and garter stitch, there are a couple things we have to do. We have to increase at each of the angles and we have to knit a row, purl a row, because we are knitting in the round this time, and the garter stitch in the round is knit a row, purl a row. And this is all really clearly explained in the pattern. I just want to run through it here. Um, while you are picking up the stitches, or on the following round, you want to place a marker at each corner. Um, one at the 90 degree angle, and one at each of the 45 degree angles, because we're going to be increasing. The 90 degree angle requires uh, a double increase every other round, and the 45 degree angles require a double increase every round. And this is how I did mine. And well, let me show you. I'm going to pull my shawl back into it so I can show you how mine, mine looked. I used KFB, KFB as my increases, and I got this nice line um, at each corner like this. I think it looks great. Bjorn gives a little bit different instructions um, in his. He uses a double yarn over as a double increase, which is fine. You're welcome to do that. Um, I couldn't keep the tension as nice with a double yarn over increase, so I did it this way. Okay, so this is how I worked my double increases at each corner. Um, on a knit row, I would KFB, slip the marker KFB at, at the 90 degree angle, work over the 45 degree angle, KFB, slip marker KFB, knit to this one, KFB, slip marker, KFB, and then knit to the end. And then we're ready to start a purl row. So slip marker, purl across, no increase, KFB, slip marker, KFB, and we're working KFBs even though it's a purl row. We want the, the line to be consistent with the increases. Purl down to the next corner, KFB, slip marker, KFB, and then purl back up to um, the beginning of the round. And then once I'm here, it's another uh, knit row, so it's an increase at the 90 degree angle, KFB, slip marker, KFB. So every knit row, you increase at the 90 degree angle, um, or at the beginning of the round is where I had it set. And then every row, knit or purl, you increase KFB, slip marker, KFB at the 45 degree angles. That was a lot of explaining about angles, but I, I hope it makes sense. I'm sure it makes sense. It really isn't that complicated. So you're going to keep going around until you're just about out of yarn, um, until you have uh, five grams of yarn. You might want to leave a little bit more than five grams of yarn for the bind off. I think I did because 
When I bound off, I used one needle size larger than I used for the whole rest of the shawl. And you can just grab a double pointed needle or whatever. I bound off with one needle size larger, but just doing a regular bind off and everything blocked out beautifully and flat and there was no bunching or pinching. But while you're binding off, of course, you can take a look, you know, bind off 20 stitches and take a look to see how your bind off is looking. Is it rippling and kind of too loose or is it really too tight for the rest of the work because you'll wanna make an adjustment before you go all the way around. I got lucky, one needle size bigger did the trick for me and um, that's all I needed and the bind off blocked out beautifully. The other thing is because this is such a nice yarn in Superwash Merino, um, it's going to be very forgiving at blocking. And so if you do have a little bit of tension issue with tightness in the bind off, it's probably just going to block right out. Anyway, um, I think we've covered everything in this pattern, <laughs> all of the trickier parts of reading the pattern. It is so fun to knit. I can't wait to make another one. And I can't wait to see how all the different colorways look in a finished shawl because there are a bunch of new colorways that just appeared that I'm excited to see knit up. Anyway, many thanks to Skano for sponsoring this tutorial and have fun and good luck on your shawl.